anybody that sees this thing will rush it. And uh, any marketer will try as much as possible to do a good package before he comes to the market so that he'll market it. But the adverse effect is what we are talking. Not that uh, the product is very fine, of which anybody that sees it will be enticed to go and rush it, not knowing that you may be going into debt. That's the summary of what I would say about this thing. There are certain countries, poorer countries, more hungry countries in Africa that have banned, rejected GMOs. One of them is Zambia. Zambia has maintained a strict ban on GMOs since 2002. And the government size concerns about food safety. That is a very a poorer government in Africa, poorer than Nigeria. They side concerns of food safety, environmental impact. I'm listing those conditions so that you will deduce what is wrong with GMOs. Food safety, because they have been found through research to have uh, indications or implications in some non-communicable diseases like cancers, metabolic syndrome, like general memory decay that is called early loss of memory. We are using the media to call on the president and to call on the National Assembly to remember that they have a social compact with the masses, with the Nigerian people, the poor farmers, the poor consumers, the children of Nigeria, that should be given a chance to have a future tomorrow. At least they should grow to maturity. But with these poisons, I doubt if they can grow. So it's difficult, like I alluded to earlier, that if you go to buy a kara, how will you know that it's produced with genetically modified beans? I they buy big, big one. Like for farm, we will select the one where we need to buy it. But for market, they will bring anyone and you will buy it like this. Tell me to the court. It's a speculation anyway. About 80-90% of people cannot differentiate between G GMOs and uh, organic plants and even animals. You know, organic are very... they look smaller. Sometimes you feel maybe uh, the soil is not good for them or they don't have enough fertilizer. But that is how they are. And they are very, very healthy. But the GMOs, the, the, the grains are very big. They produce... They produce uh, you have a massive uh, harvest at the end of the season. But this one you may not have as plenty as the other one. But this is more healthy than the other one. Common sense tells me that if German, Germany, where this thing uh, emanated from, have rejected it, if Russia has followed suit, because Russia, Russia is one of the highest world uh, exporter of, of, of wheat, but they are no more doing GMOs. They are doing organic. So they know the health hazard of it. I, I think the target might be to, to reduce population of, the, of some kind of especially Africa. Because Africa, whatever comes in, we take it a hook, line and sinker. And I don't think that's, that's the best way to do it. From the Center for Food Safety, we have been asking for the risk assessment for this telemedicine program in Nigeria until date. We even asked under the Freedom of Information Act, we haven't still gotten it. Um, other organizations have asked for it that we are aware of, they haven't gotten it. In fact, at a point, CEFSA was banned on Twitter for asking pertinent questions, the NBME. And till this moment as we speak, we have not gotten the risk assessment document. Is it wrong for us to ask for risk assessment for something that everybody needs to consume? How do we, because from what we do, is food safety. We want to guarantee that this thing is safe. We are aware that there are international concerns. We're not the only ones speaking. In fact, the Mexican president, he placed, he placed a ban on both GMO crops and glyphosate and said it was in the interest of the health of their country and the preservation of their native varieties. That was why this was done. The Mexican president said this. The Tanzanian agricultural minister also said the same thing. Banned it. Banned, in fact, they banned the control field trials because of the potential, the potential damages. Mexico tried GMO. Mexico placed a moratorium on genetically modification, modified foods as far back as 1998, but it wasn't followed. At, they lifted the moratorium about, uh, they lifted the ban on GMOs, I think about um, 2001, 2002. Across Nigeria, the rainy season brings relief from scotchy heat and agricultural bounties. One such bounty is maize, a food staple for many Nigerians. 
roasted, boiled, or cooked, maize is a tasty delicacy. But the taste, texture, and size of maize as we know it may soon become a thing of the past. Since the early 90s, science techs have been in a race to improve the genetic structure of food crops and animals. They say genetically engineering food will improve agricultural yield and increase shelf life. In October 2021, Nigeria's federal government approved a genetically modified, insect-resistant and drought-tolerant maize variety for commercial production. The seedlings became commercially available for farmers in the 2023 farming season. This marked a new chapter in the country's agricultural journey. For the average Nigerian consumer, the concept of GMOs is often shrouded in mystery. Without clear labeling or sufficient public enlightenment, people may be consuming genetically modified foods without realizing it or understanding the potential risks. It's very difficult for the common man to identify them, especially in the, in the context of the Nigerian market system. Our market system is different from the market systems in Europe and in North America and in Asia. The common man is now at the mercy of government regulators who are the gatekeepers. What they require, what they need to do is all over the world and the purpose, the foundation and purpose of government is to protect the masses, the, the common person. So the regulator is there, NAVDAC is there, who ordinarily should have the purview to regulate GMOs. But because of procured science and procured regulation, the promoters of GMOs came sponsored bills at our government levels to shift regulation of GMOs from NAVDAC to a body that they created and implanted their protégés there. So now that very important uh, gatekeeping aspect of government is missing. Tela maize is one of the genetically modified crops approved by the Nigeria's federal government on the 11th of January 2024 for open cultivation, with the hope that the challenge of drought and pest infestation on maize will be a thing of the past, thereby improving food security. The Institute for Agricultural Research, Amadubelu University Zaria, is one of the institutions that promotes Tela maize. However, Many farmers are yet to switch to these improved seedlings. Farmers have had a bitter tail producing organic maize. The introduction of Tala maize could be a game changer to end their long suffering. Salisu is one of such farmers. He welcomes GMO seeds because of the high cost of agricultural input and loss of grains to insect infestation. As I'm doing it now, I don't like the way I'm doing it. I also need something that will make the farm easier, easier for me. If I have that uh, GMO now, I will use it because like this one now, it will produce three to four bags for me. But uh, that one that you are, you are saying, maybe it will produce five to six bags. I need it. I will use it because nobody wants to suffer. And uh, if I plant it and pour chemical just once, that means I will welcome it and I also introduce it to my people. This is natural, as natural as the conventional counterparts. While responding to some of the questions raised by the Center for Food Safety and Agricultural Research, the Director of Agricultural Biotechnology Department says their findings are not based on science. Yeah, what we tell them is that um, they are highly scrutinized, the safest foods in the history of mankind. They have history of safe use in other countries that they've been used, you know. And, you know, standards uh, are being developed, you know, um, on the use of these foods and development, you know, and all technology developers, they make sure they work within those laid down standards, international standards. And these standards are being developed by WHO, OECD, FAO, and all. So, and these are internationally recognized um, regulatory bodies. 
and everyone knows them and so and then within um, countries every country at least before the country commercializes begins to commercialize a genetically modified organism that country must have a safety valve in place a regulatory agency like the one we have the national biosafety management agency you must first of all um, especially a country that is signatory you know to the katahina protocol we have the katahina protocol on biological uh, diversity so that katahina protocol of course um, you know provides you know um, ensures that every country that is party to it must develop its own regulatory framework and that's what Nigeria did because Nigeria signed the Katina Protocol in 2001 and got it ratified 2003 during President Obasanjo's time and that's why we had to now develop by safety bill took it to National Assembly which was passed and signed in 2015 by President Jonathan and after the signing of that act then came by safety management agency to just you know ensure to oversee that to oversee the movement the use you know and then the development of these genetically modified organisms by technology developers you know so everyone who wants to either develop it or import it for must apply to national biosafety management agency and all this so this is to put a safety valve in place so we already have the framework that framework in place and we have this um, agency national biotechnology research and development agency which is um, a promoter we also carry out research and development another agri research institutes also do same and so so we have nigeria has all it takes so and in terms of safety we're already safeguarded as the debate over GMO and organic crops continues in scientific circles, there is a growing call from health practitioners for Nigerians to go back to organic crops to avoid non-communicable diseases. As Nigerians steps into the era of genetically modified agriculture, the nation faces a critical choice. The promise of Tela maize is undeniable, but so too are the concerns that accompany them. In this complex landscape, Consumers, farmers, and policymakers must navigate the facts, fears, and the future of food in Nigeria. <laughs>